meeting. I call to order this regular meeting of the Minnehaha County Planning and Zoning and we'll begin with a few introductory comments. As a courtesy to everyone in the meeting room tonight, please make sure that all cell phones are turned off. Please note that tonight's Planning Commission meeting will be recorded live and available for viewing by members of the public after this meeting on the www.minnehahacounty.org site. In observance of the CDC guidelines for social distancing, tonight's meeting is taking place simultaneously with the County Commission meeting room and virtually within a Zoom meeting room online. In the Zoom meeting room, each individual user on the line will be on mute to maintain communication clarity for everyone. Every item listed on the agenda will be read separately. If any member of the public wishes to be heard on that item, you may raise your hand while I read the item description. If hands are raised, we will follow our normal hearing procedure by requesting planning staff to present a report on each item and then request the petitioner to come to the podium and make a statement or answer any questions. Anyone from the audience wishing to address the item shall be recognized by the planning staff in the order hands were raised and state their name and address for public record. The Planning Commission will then discuss the matter and take appropriate action. Also note that for those participating remotely, please watch the following instructions on how to raise your hand in the Zoom program. And for County Commissioners or Planning Commissioners, please make sure that you state who you are when you make your motions for public record. First on the agenda is public input. Is there anyone Chair, here? Can we take a roll call first? Sorry, David, go ahead. I'll take roll call. So we've got Jeff Barth. Jeff Barth. Can you indicate present? Let's circle back. Adam Moorhauser. Present. Doug Odie. Present. Mike Ralston. <coughs> Mike Ralston. <coughs> Becky Randall. Ryan Vandervliet. Present. Bonnie Duffy. Here. Jeff Barth, can you hear? Are you present? Jeff Barth, are you present? <laughs> Jeff Barth, can you hear? Mike Ralston, can you hear? Becky Randall, can you hear us? Yeah. 
Can you hear? Anybody on the Zoom? Can you hear us? Jeff Barth, can you hear us? Are you present? Yes. Mike Ralston? Yes. Becky Randall? Here. Jeff Barth? Are you here? Thank you. Proceed. First on the agenda is public input. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on an item that is not on the agenda? Uh, please raise your hand, or if you are attending remotely, you will be muted to comment. No hands are raised, Chair. Thank you. Item number one on the agenda is the minutes from the May 18th Planning Commission meeting. Is there any comments or changes to the minutes? I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the minutes of the May 18th meeting. I'll second that. A motion is made and seconded to approve the minutes of the May 18th, 2020 meeting. Uh, roll call vote. Jeff Barth. Aye. Adam Morehauser. Aye. Doug Ode. Aye. Mike Ralston. Aye. Becky Randall. Aye. Ryan Bettervlet. Aye. Bonnie Duffy. Aye. Motion uh, that the minutes have been approved. Uh, we'll move on to items number two, three, and five are conditional use permits, and item number four is an application for a major amendment to a planned development district. Any final action taken on the conditional use permits tonight will take effect five working days following this meeting unless a written appeal of the Planning Commission's decision is filed in the Planning Office by Monday, June 29th at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, the decision will be referred to the County Commission for a hearing on Tuesday, July 21st, 2020, at or after 9 a.m. The affected parties will be notified of the meeting date, and meetings of the County Commission are held in the same room. Action taken on the major amendment will be forwarded to the County Commission for a hearing on Tuesday, July 21st, 2020, at or after 9 a.m., Meetings of the County Commission are held in this same room. Next, I will start with number two. Um, if anyone wishes to comment on number two, now would be the time to raise your hand. Item number two is conditional use permit 20-16 to amend conditional use permit 13-15 to allow private campground of up to eight camping units on the property legally described as Tract 1, Bower Edition, North Half, Section 27, Township 102 North, Range 52 West. Uh, petitioner is Hunters Point Shooting Complex. They are also the property owner. The location of this is approximately 2.5 miles south of Humboldt. Uh, this particular item was uh, deferral from last month. David, do you want to give an update on that? Sure. Thank you. David Heinold, County Planning Department. Conditional use permit 20-16 was a deferral item from the previous Planning Commission meeting in May. And the petitioner is requesting an amendment to allow a private campground. The application has included several changes that have occurred since the last time, including a change to the Google Maps driving directions. And so you all have that in your packet to look at and review 
believe most of that's been changed. There is one small thing that on Google or on the driving directions, you can see that it comes north from Highway 42, but the main direction is to take the interstate all the way to there, all the way, all the way to Humboldt, and then go south on the State Highway 19. Um, I will stand by for any questions if you have them. Staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 20-16 with the changes to allow additional eight, up to eight camping units. I do have some pictures as well if you'd like to see them. Any questions for David? Charles does have his hand raised, but as for the petitioner. Petitioner, will you please come forward, state your name and address. Isaac Chambis, 3908 South Sertoma, Sioux Falls. Is there any, co or any questions for the petitioner? Madam Chair, this is Jeff. Uh, uh, I just hope you see that Mr. Loop has his hand up. I did, Jeff. We'll get to him after um, we have any questions here for the petitioner. Thank you. Yep. No further questions for you unless we have to bring you back up. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sir, do you have any comments about this conditional use permit? Are you talking to me, Charles? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, you say that the Google Maps has, has been changed? You got all of them? I, this is David, I reached out to Google and they changed the dri driving directions. I don't think so. Charles? Because <laughs> there was a person in my yard yesterday, or Friday, showed me the, he held up his phone, showed, showed driving right through my yard again. Okay. They didn't change a thing. Ms. Chair, yeah. can you ask Mr. Luther to state the name and address? My driveway is 260th Street, yeah. For the record. and it's not. It's a dead end. So you didn't change a thing. David, did you have a comment? You asked to state his name and address oh, for the record. Sir, will you please state your name and address? Charles Luth, Humble, South Dakota, 45833 260th Street. Thank you. Any other? If you go to Google, if you go to Google Maps, it still shows my driveway is 260th Street. David, do you have any comment on that? I I reached out to Google and told them that it was a private road and everything that went on during the meeting. What was said? We reached out to, they've got a, they have an update deal on their app or whatever, and we submitted a deal, but it didn't, never heard back or nothing. Anyone else? Excuse me, Matt, if I may. No, well, go ahead. So I, I just, Larson here, I just tried it on my phone here, and. It appears that though it's corrected not to drive through your, your driveway, but. So it comes up, shows you one, two, three options, and usually my driveway is the third option. Yeah, I'm looking at <laughs> two right now. Yeah. Was that you, Mike Ralston? Yes, that's correct. Oh, okay. Any other comments on this item? I don't know what can be done. It's just, it's just frustrating. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have no qualms about him actually going ahead with the, his project, but, you know, it's just frustrating that nothing can be done or he won't work with me, you know, ever since he took over from Tony. I had no problems with Tony. Anything 
trouble I had or anything he wanted, we worked together. But he doesn't seem to want to work with me, so, you know, it's just frustrating. Any further comments? Thanks, Madam Chair. This, uh, this is Commissioner Adam Morehouser. Uh, did he talk to him about this, what he proposed to the township, I guess, for 260th? Does Charles know about that, Mr. Luth, or not? They're not going to close the road. That's ridiculous. That's my mail route. That's my fire route. Ambulance, Ambulance route, whatever. You cannot close that road. That is ridiculous. And I can't, I, well, I can't or I will not go the other way because that's part, I'd have to change my address. Or my driveway comes out on 459, that's Hartford Mail Route. So I'd have to change my address. And I won't do that. I've lived in Humboldt, been in Humboldt all my life. Lived here 65 years, I've lived here, 60, coming on 66, home place. Any other comments on this item? No, I don't have any more. Ma'am, I can't be re held responsible for Google. I, I don't know how to fix it. I've never had a problem with Charlie and we're a mile apart. Google Maps is beyond me. But the only other thing we can do is close that road. And it's been underwater for two years, so for two years we haven't had any issues. But now the road's out and it's drying out and we're seeing traffic again. And it's not all my customers, Charlie. So, I don't know how to fix Google. We tried to fix it three or four years ago. I posted a sign, no right turn coming out of my gate. The townships put up the dead end signs, and sometimes people are just out driving around, so they're not all Hunter's Point. But that uh, Google Maps and people driving around has got nothing to do. I just, we wanted to put in a half a dozen campsite. That really turning into a Google battle now and not a, we started this, we went in for a, see if I needed a building permit for a campground, and now we're in a conditional use permit hearing. Now I'm fighting with Google, and I don't even know how to fix that one. So Google's out of my pay grade. Okay. Anybody have any questions for him? Madam Chair, Charles has his hand raised. Oh. Charles, do you have a comment? Yeah, I just did. Chris says, you know, that the road's been underwater for two and a half years. Well, there's lots of roads that have been underwater for the last two and a half years. This road, I've lived here all my life, and we've never had this problem until this last couple of years. And there was something, there's a tile in it, and uh, something was plugging it. It got plugged. I've been working on it the few years before that because I could tell it was slowing down. It wasn't draining as fast as it should have been. Then all of a sudden it plugged, it wasn't draining hardly at all. From my part, if there's other openings that go in his land, well, it was draining fine on his side, but it wasn't. Now finally something let loose and it drained, it's gone. So, I mean, as far as being that road trouble, it's just been the last two and a half years. I mean, I've lived here all my life. And that road has never been underwater more than maybe five, six days, and then it's, the water's gone. Seeing the tile voice worked. I guess that's all I have to say about that. And then the other only thing I was going to comment on is uh, I'd like you guys to realize what a burden this is, that business is on the township. The traffic on that road is terrible. They tear it up. It's cost the township a lot more money to try to maintain that road and keep it in shape, the gravel. And I don't know how it works on a temporary use permit tax-wise, how the township, maybe, you know, the taxes go to the county, but I don't think the township hardly ever sees any of that money. And uh, I mean, it's just a burden, uh, I guess. And that's the only other comment I have. Charlie, I'm zoned commercial. And my traffic isn't any worse than the chop wagons coming off the cornfield in October and November. Okay, are there any further questions for, for the petitioner? 
Commissioners, do you have any further comments? I couldn't hear what he was saying, but, uh, you know, the, you know, the traffic, you know, when he has those big events, there's up to 50, 60 cars going in there, and it's just terrible. Uh, it tears it up, and, uh, you know, as far as traffic in the Harvest traffic, I say that's a total different subject to me, as far as I'm concerned. Just trying to make you guys aware of things that are going around here that you have no idea living in town when we're out here by ourselves. I got the other neighbor talking to him. I don't think they uh, are online tonight, but and they have the same trouble. The cars drive up the driveway that's right across from Hunter's Point. Cars just looky lose, drive up in there and turn around, you know, just people have no respect for other people's property, it seems like. That has nothing that's to do with That's all I have to say for now, I guess. Thank you. Do you have any further comments, sir? Man, people are people. <laughs> The people that drive around and dump trash out there and drive away are just people. They've got no bearing on me and my business. My people come in my gate and I deal with all their their issues. So this isn't a road hearing or a water hearing or drainage issue. This is me putting six overnight campgrounds in there where the guys come in out of state to shoot with RVs and I've got hookups in place. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Commissioners, any comments? Anyone else care to speak to this item? Madam Chair, like Mike, I did just try the directions on my phone and my my Google map showed the revised correct um, directions. Thank you. Any other comments, commissioners? Madam Chair, this is uh, uh, Jeff Barth here. I think that uh, it certainly uh, we've had a lot of discussion on this, and I understand the concerns of both sides. But I think we need to act, and I am going to make a motion to approve this project. Do I have a second? second. Do I have a second? Uh, Mike Carlson will second. Thanks, Mike. <coughs> hey, we'll have a roll call vote. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Jeff Barth? Aye. Adam Morhauser? Aye. Doug Odie? Aye. Mike Ralston? Aye. Becky Randall? Aye. Ryan Vetterflit? Aye. Bonnie Duffy? Aye. Item number two has been approved. Item number three, conditional use permit 20-17 to allow a manufactured home on the property legally described as Track 9, Eggers Edition, Northwest Quarter, Northeast Quarter, Section 16, Township 102 North, Range 49 West. The petitioners, Bill and Sandy Bruns. The property owner is Timothy Eggers. Uh, the location is approximately three miles north of Sioux Falls. Kevin? Good evening. Kevin Hookman, County Planning Department. Uh, as you just stated, conditional use permit number 2017 uh, is a request for to place a manufactured home on a one-acre parcel uh, approximately a quarter mile into the west of the, the Renner Corner gas station that is familiar to the area. 
Uh, the petitioner has submitted, I'll go through the site plan real quick, a uh, sketch of the future layout uh, and includes brushes and screens for the future of the garage. The petitioner has uh, explained in the narrative that the home is 2,700 square feet in size uh, and it looks in a manner of a single family home. The zoning ordinance does allow manufactured homes to be placed on a property uh, with some conditions such as uh, foundation walls uh, and it has to be a double wide trailer as well as roof pitch and these conditions are placed on the property or in the mobile homes in order to make them look as much like a single family dwelling as possible. Uh, since receiving this petition or this conditional use permit application uh, the, the neighbors have uh, submitted a, uh, a petition with a list of concerns on the property. We'll just co cover a few of those. Uh, the primary concerns include uh, neighborhood character and property value. Uh, and as previously stated, staff uh, uh, suggests that the, the zoning ordinance takes care of some of the uh, appearance issues with requiring foundation walls and uh, a higher pitched roof. Uh, another concern that was raised in the petition was further residential growth in the area. And uh, the area is zoned, or the lot does have a building eligibility on it, as well as another lot nearby. And there's also just to the, let's see if I can get a mouse, if that's visible, just to the east of the site, there is a large area that is re residentially zoned. So as far as uh, future residential growth in the area is already ready for that, whether the residential home is placed there or not, or the mobile home is placed there or not. The conditional use permit criteria uh, that we cover through every conditional use permit, uh, number one, the effect upon the use and enjoyment of, of other property in the immediate vicinity for uses already permitted and upon property values in the immediate vicinity. Uh, this is a residential subdivision. Uh, it is located uh, outside of the floodplain, as most of Renner, or a good portion of the western part of Renner is in the floodplain. Uh, and the subject par parcel was platted with the building eligibility, and so it's not going to increase in density. Uh, staff feels that the placement of the manufactured home will not generate any more traffic than any other single family home as well. Uh, and number two, the effect upon the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding vacant properties for use as predominant in the area. Uh, this is, uh, is, again, zoned for residential or mostly residential areas. This will be a residential use um, and then it's expected for more residential in the area. Uh, the presence of the ma manufactured home will not likely affect future development of homes in the area. Number three, the utilities, access roads, drainage, or other necessary facilities are provided. The property is accessed off of Church Avenue, right here. Uh, the, it is also located within the Renner Sanitary Sewer District, so it will be required to hook up to that rather than having a, s a septic system. Uh, and all required utilities must be extended by the property owner. Number four, that off-street parking and loading requirements are met. Uh, the lot is large enough to accommodate off-street parking. Number five, that measures are taken to control offensive odors, fumes, dust, noise, vibration, lighting, inclusive light of signs so that none of these will constitute a nuisance. So it's a residential uh, dwelling and it should not create any offensive nuisances. And number six, the health, safety, and general welfare of the public and comprehensive plan. Uh, this parcel is located within a rural service area of the comprehensive plan, which allows further development. The property uh, will follow all requirements of the uh, zoning ordinance, as I mentioned before. So Minneapolis County staff recommends approval of conditional use permit number 2017 with five conditions. One, the building permit must be obtained prior to the placement of mobile home. Two, each section of the mobile home must bear a label certifying that it is built in compliance with federal manufactured home construction and safety standards. Three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, permission must be obtained for the Renner Sanitary Sewer District to connect to the sanitary sewer line. 
Four, the manufacturer at home must comply with all requirements of Article 12.06C of the 1990 Revised Zoning Ordinance for Minneapolis County. And five, prior to the issuance of a building permit, a right to farm notice covenant must be filed on the, de on the deed with the Register of Deeds. Uh, there's, this is the drawing of the sketch plan that was provided to show that the house will be in the middle of the lot and there's plans for uh, shrubbery and uh, kind of screen vegetation. Uh, this is a photo of the lot itself off the corner. You can see there's ag located in the background. Uh, this would be down, oh, this is from the, uh, the main road in Renner looking south on Church Avenue. Uh, you can see the residential uses on both sides of the road, and the way in the far back will be the location of the petitioner's house. Uh, this is the, the neighbor's dwelling to the east of the property. Uh, and this is looking down Church Avenue again towards the church, as well as the neighbor to the north of the property. And then there's another photo of uh, Church Avenue. Uh, and to give a little bit of a picture of the overall area, this is a pictometry view of the neighborhood. Um, you can see along here there are, are several smaller lots. Uh, this will actually be one of the larger lots in the neighborhood uh, right here. There's a, a similar size, another one acre lot located right here that will also be ready for development uh, if another buyer comes along. Um, and uh, I put on, the petitioner has submitted several photos uh, and I put some of these photos in the PowerPoint so she can go through them uh, of the neighborhood. Um, just so that she's aware we can move through them. Uh, roof pitch, some of the neighboring houses to give an idea of the property, and that must be all of them. Um, I gotta get back. Uh, but is there any questions? Madam Chair, I got just a Adam. couple. Um, how many lots do they have ready to be developed on, or how many, or how many are they planning on having there? Uh, this is the only house or the lot that there's planned for a ma manufactured home. Uh, there are two lots that are using building eligibilities that are one acre lots that are ready to be built on. Okay. But how many more in that 15 acres? Well, can they? Uh, the 15 houses? acres, I think with the residential zone in the sanitary sewer district, you can get a, quite a few in it. They, they don't, aren't limited to one acre lots with that residential zoning district. See if I can get back to a couple of slides. Yeah, there we go. Is there any other questions? Yeah, Kevin, I, I think you said it, but I just want to make sure it's clear that this is not in the floodplain, correct? Yes, this is okay. not in the floodplain. Okay. Any other questions for Kevin? Okay, as the petitioner here, will you please come forward and state your name and address? Okay, uh, Sandra Bruns, uh, 25638 475th Avenue, Renner, South Dakota. Bill Bruns, same address. I mean, I don't know what you guys want me to say. Kevin's really done well on his report. As he said, my home is a ranch style uh, house at 2,700 square feet. It may have a VIN number, but that's really as far as it goes. Um, we have checked all over. Nobody wants to put it into their mobile home because it's too big. The average mobile home that's placed in lots are between 15 and 1,800 square feet. When we look at 2,700 square feet, that's because it's supposed to be a house, or it is a house, built as a house. Um, and we put it here after the, our last house burnt. Our idea has always been to put it on some land. And, you know, we've, we're in that situation now where we can do that. Um, it's built to HUD standards. It does have the little things on it that says that. Um, the homes in Renner, and I wrote some things down, so if you'll bear with me. The homes in Renner 
most of them are the ranch style box houses and my home will fit or our home will fit perfect into that neighborhood very well it will be on a foundation just like any other home in that area and if we were putting it into multi-million dollar home area then I would understand but um, this home like I say it, it's gonna look just like any other home and if you ha hadn't seen this home with skirting on it and it had been on a foundation with a garage you wouldn't be able to tell whether or not it is a manufactured home or a regular home there's no covenants or HOAs or restrictions for placing the home in this area area so therefore it's only fair that no other restrictions be placed on our home that you wouldn't require of any other home that would be built in that area um, it's not going to devalue or ruin the character of any homes in Renner I've been assured once we get everything situated in the garage on and landscaping and everything we want it to be a beautiful area we want it to be park like we're going to do a lot of um, natural privacy um, hedges trees so that the neighbors won't be bothered and you know I know when people think about a manufactured home they're still thinking trailer house you know my home would be undistinguishable between another home had you not seen it in where it's parked now people all the time come in I mean we've had police officers because we had somebody something stole and repair people and they say wow this is really a nice home I've even shared with Kevin some pictures of that um, we've worked really hard to pay off this home and we paid it off 10 years early um, we've just put uh, be believe about thirteen thousand dollars worth of new windows in it just to update it so they're energy efficient we've put in hardwood floors and new carpeting we wanted to build a shed this year for all of our wood and stuff because we have a fireplace in there but we were told that anything that is attached to the land where we're at becomes the landowners so we haven't been able to put a shed out for that um, you know we recognize there's been object objections to us putting a home here we've spoken with the licensed real estate agents and they've assured us the property values will not go down but instead it will increase the value um, I talked to Phil Eggers about that and he's the one who told me that we attempted to visit with the neighbors about this but they're still thinking trailer house and my home's not that um, my son who is friends with um, some people that with one of their neighbors I'm sorry I'm nervous my son who is friends with some people who live there his um, great nephew we went over and tried to talk to him and at first they told me oh yeah welcome to the neighborhood great glad to have you then Kevin called me and said that they had objected and my son and their nephew their great nephew went over there to talk to him and there was a, a heated discussion and I actually I'm thankful that at 37 and 38 that my kids will listen to me and I've told them we're not going to do that um, we're going to do this the right way we're going to be good neighbors and I asked them to apologize and it's my understanding that they did um, I just have one thing left yet to say here and I'm sorry I'm just really really nervous um, I, I just feel like you know this isn't going to ruin the house I mean since there's going to be no devalue of the homes or damages to the homeowners properties rights or the neighborhood in general in Renner then there really is no substantial issue here to address no sufficient reason to deny this application our home will look the same as other homes uh, will in Renner and I will make sure that there's never any junk cars garbage or anything else laying around I'm really particular you can ask my son back there I'm kind of a pain in my husband because I make him work all the time I do respect the neighbors rights to object however without a direct and pertinent issue that would cause problems devalue their property or damage the area or infringe on their rights in this manner I really am asking you to please approve it because we don't have anywhere else to go we'll lose our home and at 61 I'm sorry guys I'm just too old to go out and buy a new home or start over and then we'd have to lose our family home and I don't mean to get emotional but this is our home that we're gonna have to sell and get rid of if we can't move it here and there's really no reason we can't just move our home here and make it a beautiful home that's all we want to do any questions from, any further questions for the petitioner Are there any Zoom participants out there? Um, would you raise your hand if you want to speak on this item?
Thank you. We may call you back. David, were there any out there that raised their hands? Okay. I didn't see any. Are there any opponents in the in the room that would care to speak to this item? Please state your name and address. Yeah, my name is Javan Lindbergh, and my address is 25807 Church Avenue in Renner. Um, she, she's correct. She did come to my house, um, and we met, and we talked. We had a nice visit, and she said that she had bought the land next to us. And then she said that she was going to put a modular home, or I'd take it as a trailer in there. And we worked hard to keep our places up. And the, where we live, we live right, it will be right next to them. So Churchill comes, stops right at our house. Barry Lane stops right at our house. So I guess if, if any, any house that comes in there, they need to extend that road. I don't know what their address will be because where, they're, where they come down in is right in the front of our garage. I mean, it buries off and goes in front. And yes, yeah, so they did come over. The kids did come over with a heated discretion, um, slamming my doors, calling me every name in the book. And yes, they did send me a sympathy card. And it says, we want to sincerely apologize for our behavior on Tuesday. You see, we love our family very much and take it personal when people mess with us. We know you don't understand this. You are just a broken child of God. That's why we will pray for you. May Jesus be with you both. And I, I mean, they were slamming the door so hard and calling us different names for kids because the, the petition, none of us want this trailer out there. You know, if we put one trailer there, are we going to have a trailer park around us? If we start one, the other lots behind us, are they going to be trailers? I mean, there's one person that wanted to put a trailer in there in 71. They told him no. He could not put a trailer out there, so he had to build a house. And I, I guess we need to extend the road. And they would, I don't have problems with them being neighbors if it would be a house instead of a trailer. That is my only complaint. I, d I don't want my house, to, our house to depreciate, uh, depreciate, and none of us, none of us do. You know, we we have our houses, we have our families there too, and my kids, and my grandkids, and that's home to us too. So that's all I have to say right now. But we, they need, to, that road needs to be extended instead of coming down off. And there's room for it. They just need to build it south, so they have an ad or an address. Because, like I said, the roads shut off right in front of our house. So, that's my concern. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would care to speak to this item? State your name and address, please. I'm one of the people that lives in that neighborhood. Can you say your name and address, please? Pardon? Your name and address. My name is Carol Eggers, E-G-G-E-R-S. And I have lived in that neighborhood for 50 years. Um, anytime you move anything into an, any place, it's still a trailer. Just because it doesn't have wheels on it doesn't mean it's not basically a trailer. And we've all lived there for like 50 years. We have built our houses, you know, and we don't have a problem with anybody coming out there and building a house. Mm -hmm. But anytime you move something in, it devalues our property because it's still not the same as building a house. So that's the reason that we're really opposing this. You know, anybody that wants to build a house there, we'd welcome them with open arms. But we've all built our houses there, and we've lived there for 50 years, and we just don't feel that we need, we just don't want to deal with, uh, with somebody moving something in. Because once you start that, you might be in for some, you can't stop it then. 
and we all we'd be happy if somebody wanted to buy that land and build. We welcome them with open arms, but not this way. Could you give us your name? You did give me your name, ma'am. Can you give us our, what your address is out there? I'm sorry, we're here. Your address. Yet. Where do you live out there? What's your address? My address is 25803 Church Avenue. So. Hi, my name is Kayla DeCourcy. My address is 25804 Church Avenue. And my concerns are right along the same as everybody else that you've heard um, that is opposing this is the devaluing of our homes um, a manufactured home it is a mobile home it is a trailer they're all the same and we just had a market analysis done on our home and our realtor did tell us that it would decrease the value of our home if we were to sell our home um, so that's our main concern our, my second concern is is if it is allowed then Who's to say the next person's? Yes, yours might look very nice, but who's to say that the next person's isn't going to be the same way? And it's just opening up a can of worms, I think, for the whole neighborhood. Um, now, as far as the altercation that took place on that Tuesday at our neighbor's house, the heated conversation, it, um, I was outside when it happened. I was in my garage and I could hear the profanities, the multiple profanities that were going on and I stepped out, my daughter came out from in the dining room, in the house, doors closed, windows closed, and she was wondering what was going on because she could hear it. I understand that people are getting heated about it, but that is just stuff I don't need my eight year old, my 14 year old, or my one and a half year old to be around. We have a very peaceful neighborhood, we all get along, and to me, that's just not the way that you come in and talk about things. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I ask yes. her a question? Adam, go ahead. I just want to know, I'm just curious, you guys all talk about pre-manufactured houses. I guess, what's the difference between this house and like a house that was made in Madison, I guess, you know, that was moved on there? What would be the difference, I guess? To me, they're all the same. I mean... So what's the difference I mean, of that house compared to this house, I guess, well, that's value-wise? Well, to me, those ones really, I haven't really looked into what the ones in Madison are. I mean, I don't have... Pre-manufactured houses, I guess. If you look up the definition of a, pre of a manufactured home, it says manufactured home prefabricated. Yes, that's what these are. It also says also known as a trailer, also known as a trailer house, a mobile home. They're all the same. But I wouldn't classify those from that are pre-manufactured mats and as trailer homes. So I guess how can you classify this as a trailer home? Are, those homes aren't 80 feet long. Those homes are more of a stick built home. You can tell the difference when you look at a home versus if it's a mobile home or trailer home, manufactured home versus a, one of the other wood stick built homes. I'm just thinking like my grandma's house, her house is, uh, it's a ranch house, it's probably mm -hmm. 90 feet long. I guess I don't see a problem with that. It's a manufactured house or a trailer house or anything like that. I guess I don't see the difference between a house like that compared to a house like this. I can't speak to that because I don't know what your grandmother's house looks like, but I can tell you what I've seen of their house. Okay, I just wondering. Well, and like in the letter that she had sent to one of my neighbors as well, she had said that their home has to be on a foundation. It's not on a foundation right now, so what, why does it have to be on a foundation and move to where we're at? I believe because they're renting it, so why would you put a foundation there if you're renting it? Well, so it doesn't have to be on a foundation. So she can find another place to do it. Well, she... If she buys this, she own it, you put a foundation well, on Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. If she does own it and she is able to move that in, then that's what she is able to do. Okay. Thank Ma you. Madam Chair, it's one of the requirements that it has to be on the foundation, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. Which, wait a minute. 
sir, back there, did you have a comment or did you want to make? Sir, I have also a comment. Yes, you can come forward, state your name and address. David Wilson, I live at 47475 Barry Lane, the house that's right to the east of it. And uh, my main concern also is about the road. I got my plot plan showing there's a road that goes alongside that property of mine, which would be now against that one, that have to be extended to the end of that property to be physically on Church Ave. And second, as far as like the modular homes of man in Madison, I personally have gone up there, looked at those, those are completely different the way built, look, and everything compared to a manufactured house. I'm like, my value of my house is gonna go down. I had talked to Dina Becker, a realtor. I have talked to my personal builder that built my house for Gene D. Har that also sell houses, that it would devalue my house, it'd make it harder to sell my house because it is a manufactured home and they belong in a trailer park. Gene D. Har owns several trailer parks in Sioux Falls. So and uh, I, it just doesn't, not gonna fit in. You got a $250,000 house, you got a $350 some thousand dollar house to the north of it, and you're gonna stick a double wide manufactured house right between them. Makes no absolute no sense. And then you're gonna open it up, another trailer house. And then as far as those other lots, that land, that would be behind mine and my neighbor there, those 15 acres, they have tried to sell it what, a year or two ago? Unsuccessful, they had offers in it, denied. So I don't foresee any of that getting developed anytime soon. Thank you. Is there anyone on Zoom that cares to speak to this item? Sandy Sorum has her hand raised. Okay, go ahead, tell me your name and address, please. Uh, Sandy Sorum, 47510, 258th Street, Renner. Did you hear me? Yes. You have some comments? Okay. Uh, yes. Um, they were concerned about um, the road by um, Lance House. Church Avenue is a legal road, which will be uh, maintained. So the uh, highway won't come right out there by the, the end of uh, the road that's there now. So they don't have to worry about that. And also, I don't know if you commissioners know, there's another manufactured home in the area just to the east. And uh, then there's an, also a, a single wide um, trailer home there. So this is the first one that is coming to the area. Just wanted to let you know that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? David, was there any? None? Anybody else want to, you can come back and then we'll have the petitioner come forward after that, okay? Okay, I just wanted to mention um, years ago when we moved in there, these lots were opened and we had gone out and talked to Kurt Eggers on trying to purchase another lot. At that time, Kurt said he could not sell another lot. If he did, he would have to extend those roads and do different, de open those roads up so they'd have clearance to get to them roads. So I guess, you know, if there's one behind us and then there's one to the south of us, they need to extend Churchill all the way down. That's the way I was told it 20 years ago when I asked for another lot. So that's what I have to all. Madam, can I ask you a question? Yeah, ma'am, please come back. Um, you were saying how um, just because it wasn't a house, a built house, that would be devaluing property. Right. Okay, what if a house was built there, but they did nothing to, they just built the house and did nothing to improve it. They had trash all over. Just because it's a house or versus this manufactured home, 
what guarantees do you have? You could have a neighbor that would buy across the street from you, and what if they didn't take care of their home? Would that devalue your property? Yes, it would. Okay. But it, it's not a trailer home. It will not come in on wheels. It'll, they'll pay, maybe take a little more pride in it. And th what's their address going to be? Is what I'm going to say, what I'm trying to say. That's my main concern, is because the road ends there. So if we knew that, uh, is it Church Avenue or Ju Churchill Avenue Church. was, ex was extended, you'd be okay with that, that they had an address? If that they was built a house. I don't want our house depreciated. We put our house values at like 350 375 And I guess I don't want a trailer home sitting next to our house to depreciate our home. We worked hard for that home. We have paid for our home. You know, we try to take care of it and we update it all the time. We're trying to improve it. And you get a trailer home in there. I mean, I, if, if it was a house in there and they didn't take care of it, I would complain about that. Because we don't want our values to go down. Kind of fearing the unknown, right? No, I don't, I, I don't want a trailer home in our place. It will depre depreciate the value. I don't want anything coming in on wheels. It needs to be a stick home. Bob, Ag Bob DeGriff tried to put a trailer in there years ago. At that time, the neighborhood all complained about it. He had to build a house. So I don't know why it's any different then than it should be now. And he built, ended up building a house. He was denied the trailer. And that was a double wide trailer that he had bought and was gonna put in there. And they denied that. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir, would you like to come forward? Second. Please state your name too and your address. Uh, Tony Hewitt, uh, 3309 South First Avenue, Sioux Falls. Um, I just wanted to, come up, so these are my parents. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to say when I came in here today, but, you know, a lot of their concerns, you know, the, the, the road, like that's a residential spot, so you can build a house on that. So whether or not Church Avenue has to be extended or not, that's not the land buyer's problem, you know. Um, as far as it turning into a trailer park, my parents have worked really hard over their lives to be able to afford that home, and when they were told that the land that they were renting was going to be sold from underneath them, gathered all their resources, and was able to buy an acre of land at $65,000. How many other people do you know that have trailers that can afford a $65,000 acre of land? So as far as it turning into some kind of trailer park, how is that going to happen? Um, these are good people. You know, My dad's a veteran of the Marines. My mom worked in health care. Like, their place is kept up. They have fences and, and trees that they planted. I just bought three willow, delivered three willow trees last year out there that they were planting and now we're going to stay there because the land got, you know, sold from underneath them. But the, the, the concerns that these people have, which again are valid and I, I understand where they're coming from, but it's, it's not really concerns. Um, they'll, they'll keep up the land. They, my mom takes a lot of pride. My, my dad takes a lot of pride in their home. Um, they're constantly updating it, putting new windows in it. I laid a hardwood floor <laughs> just last year in it. Um, this is just a home and it's, it's their home. And they're doing everything in their power to, to keep their home and to do it the right way. And I, I'm, I'm not ashamed, but I'm just a little disappointed in the people of Renner. Uh, they've lived out there for 20 years and they've been part of that community and they, they, they go to the local places, they eat at the local places, shop at the local places out there. And to have this kind of uproar uh, about what's going on just really disappointed me and the people of Renner. Um, but that's all I have to say. So, thank you. Thank you. You know, I just want to say this, and, and to the Limburgs and stuff, I did not know my son or their great nephew was going to go over there and talk to them. They did come out right afterwards and tell me. Um, I was upset because, like I say, on Friday I was told, great welcome to the family you know, welcome to the neighborhood you'll make a great neighbor and then on Tuesday when Kevin called me and told me that there's objections I did go over and try to find out what they were objecting to I, I've actually included my phone number in 
the letter that you sent out because I want it to be open to having anybody give me a call, come on over, look at my house. Let me show you what I've done. Let me show you what our plans are. Let me be part of the, the neighborhood. Nobody called. But, I mean, I was not at that meeting, so I just want to make that clear. But I do apologize to them because that's not us. I am a Christian woman, and we just had a discussion. You can ask my husband the other day about this again. The character of our family is not going to be assassinated by getting mad and fighting. That's, there's no reason for that. And so there will not be any hostile. There won't be swearing. There won't be fights. Um, I won't tolerate that in my home. And you can trust me. You can ask him, my son. I will kick any one of my four sons' butt because I've had to do it in the past. You raise four boys, you have to kind of get tough, especially when you live with a Marine. So I just want to let you know that, that I will not tolerate any kind of hassling of the neighbors. We want to be good neighbors. But if they don't want us there, well, we're still going to move there. We're going to make a beautiful place. We're going to put lilac bushes real tall so they don't have to see us. And it is not going to drop down the value. Otherwise, I'd have to call Phil Eggers a liar. And I'm not going to do that. He told me the value would go up. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. I would like to say one more thing. Sandy Sorum lives across the road from this whole addition. If she's saying anything, you know, in favor of this, she doesn't even live. She doesn't even live in that block. She she lives about a half a mile away on the other side of the the highway, and this is the rest of us live right there, and we've all built our houses and we've lived there a very long time. We don't have a problem with anybody that wants to come and build a house, but it doesn't do our, it, 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 any, any insurance agent will tell you that it doesn't, it's not the same thing as moving something in. It's a lot more expensive to build a house, and we understand that, but we don't want to give up our houses. We don't want to give up the equity in our houses you know, because somebody else can't do that. Uh, and, and I feel bad for people like that, but we've lived there a long time. Our houses are worth a lot of money, and it does nothing but devalue our house when something like that has moved in. And like I said, Sandy son lives across the road. She doesn't even live in that block. She doesn't even live in, in Renner itself. She lives across the road. So <laughs> I just always tell you that. Thank you. Sir, do you have something new to add? Yes, I do. Okay. As far as I said, just Sandy Sorum, the, the 15 acres I'd be behind me is owned by Charlotte Sorum. Sandy Sorum doesn't even own a single piece of property within 500 feet of that property. And as far as a manufactured home, like what they have, I have previously dug foundations for those in Sioux Falls on Marion and Maple that was specifically for developments for what they have to put on foundations and found walls, not out in the country with neighbors. I think that was it, if I remember right. I think that's all hey. I over. Sandy Sorum has her hand raised. Okay, Sandy, you want to, you have any comment? I couldn't hear what that gentleman said. What did he say? You mean the last gentleman that was up? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he just indicated that you really didn't own any land there. I don't. I do. This is my land and my brothers and sisters. So. Yeah. I'm just trying to explain that people are having a concern about the road, the Church Avenue goes all the way down to the Berry land, clear to the south. So nobody has to worry about an address being changed or anything. It'll be Church Avenue. As far as me not living in the area, I live across the road, but yes, I had a trailer in my backyard for years. And 
I never said one thing. So if anybody's going to say, just because I live across the road, I don't know what you guys are talking about, I do. And also, as I stated before, there are two other manufactured homes in the area. How did they get there? Can you explain that? Is that all you have to say, ma'am? That's it. Okay. One more time. Sandy Sorum doesn't own any land in there. They own, what is it, the Renner Corner, and then they live on the east side of uh, the Cliff Ave right there from where they live. They don't physically live within or own any property within 500 feet of these two properties. Uh, whatever Cody owns, last name Cody owns the land that would be adjacent to these two properties for sale, and then it was Charlotte Sorum that owns the other stuff that would be anywhere close that people don't live in houses already. That's within the 500 feet of these two houses. To clarify that anything that Sandy Sorum should be taken out because she doesn't physically own anything within the 500 feet. And as far as those other two trailer house mobile homes, are they actually within the 500 feet of these two properties to even classify them into any of this meeting here? Scott. No, Madam Chairman. Scott Anderson, Planning Director. Just to, to clarify for everyone, you don't have to, any property owner or anyone in the county can participate in a public hearing. It's not just the people that have property within 500 feet. So we need to listen to all county residents or any resident. Uh, that's the first item. And second item is um, the lot this parcel one acre parcel does have legal access so it would be able to get an address uh, they may need to extend church to get a driveway off off that but uh, it does it is a legally platted lot and is eligible for uh, residential development thank you okay i think we've all heard public comment as well as the petitioners. Commissioners, do you have any comments? Madam Chair. Uh, Ryan? Madam Chair, this is Jeff. Go ahead, Ryan. What are you calling on, ma'am? Ryan just started, and then you, Jeff, I think that's you, you chimed in. Go ahead, Ryan. Uh, Madam Chair, I was just going to say that I live just, I live out in the country, and I live just down the road from one of these homes they're trying to do. It's on a foundation. Looks very nice. They've done really well with it. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Jeff, did you have a comment? I Madam Chair, I'm just uh, hoping to hear some more discussion from other commissioners. Adam, you have any comments? <laughs> well, I know this area very well. But like you said, you paid 65000 for this lot. I guess if you can afford 65000 for a lot, I guess you can put there what you want to put there, I guess, in my book. Because if you can't afford that, you can't afford a decent house, I guess. Doug, any comments? Well, I kind of like what Adam just said. Anybody that can pay that much for a lot, uh, they can do what they want. Um, you know, I know the, the those that spoke that were against this. I mean, just because it's not going to be a stick house built right there right now, that does not guarantee that it's going to look beautiful and it's going to make the values of their properties go up or stay high. I mean, you could have somebody build a stick home and just make it look like trash because they're kind of at an end, 
end of the road right there right now. So we're, it's not guaranteeing, guaranteeing anything. A uh, uh, stick home would be any, give you any hope of increasing or keeping the values where they are right now. Mike Ralston, you have any comments? You know, I guess I may be a little more on the fence than uh, on this one. Um, you know, I, I recognize and applaud them. Uh, you know, we pointed out that they spent 65000 on a lot. Um, that, is, that is quite the accomplishment. Um, I don't think that automatically gives you the right to do whatever you want with it, but um, at the same point, though, I think that, you know, a nice point has been made as well. Um, that just a stick home does not guarantee that the the owner or occupant would maintain to the same level that um, these people would either. So I, I guess I don't I don't have my mind made up quite yet. Becky Randall, do you have any comments? I'm with Mike. Um, I appreciate all the comments and all the discussion. Um, it just makes me. I don't know if I want to say happy, but I'm just glad to hear all the discussion about it. I understand the neighbors' concerns, but I also see the pictures. I know other people who have um, mobile homes or pre-manufactured homes, and they look very nice and well-maintained. They, they can be just as nice as a regular home. Um, so. I'm a little bit on the fence. I think the fact that it's a one acre lot is an advantage because it can be set back a little ways and on the drawing it looks like it would be set back. And with good trees and screening, um, I think it could be a very, a very nice looking, a very nice looking home, especially with that amount of land. It's not going to be right down right next to someone else's property so i think that that's a plus jeff have you had enough comments see madam chair i got one other thing adam go ahead i was looking through here it's a 2007 I guess model uh, 13 years old I guess you look at some other houses I know where they're talking about they got some new houses but I think some of the older ho them houses in there are probably 20 plus years old I guess or probably even 30 plus 40 I don't know I guess you get a newer house in there I guess I don't see property value all that bad being you know losing too much value out of property values I guess out of it it's not like it's a 50-year-old home you're bringing in there, mobile home. Okay. Jeff, are you on? Jeff Barth? Yeah. I'm here at Renner for a few hours recently, and uh, I know that some of the thick-built homes, uh, not the ones in the that I see on the... Uh, Jeff, we can't hear you. And I've also seen some of these manufactured homes moved in on, on, you can't hear me? You can't hear me? You are bleeding in and out. Okay, well, I'm going to be quiet then. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn off your camera. That'll save some bandwidth. <laughs> okay, commissioners. Is this any better? I can hear you. That's clear. Jeff, do you have any further comments to make? I am here, but uh, can can you hear me? Yes, That's we can. <laughs> okay, well, I was just going to say that some of the existing homes on the uh, 258th Street are 
in pretty rough shape. Yet they are uh, thick built, and uh, you know, I, I believe this would certainly be a better building than than some of the existing ones in town. That's my comment. Thank you. Commissioners? I guess that being said, I'd make a motion to approve item three. I'll second that motion. Okay, a motion is made and seconded to approve conditional use permit 20-17. 20, 20 uh, any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Jeff Barth? Aye. Adam Morehauser? Aye. Doug Odie? Aye. Did you hear me? We did. Mike Ralston? No. Becky Randall? Aye. Ryan Vetterblit? Aye. Bonnie Duffy? Aye. Finish use permit 2017 has been approved. Item number four, major amendment 20-02 to amend the sub-area map for the Cedar Ridge PD plan development district to add six single-family lots to the sub-area A from the existing sub-area C on the property legally described as Track 1 and 2, Anson Edition, including Cedar Ridge Edition, North Half, Southwest Quarter, Section 3, Township 103 North, Range 49 West. The petitioner is Eric Willitson. Property owner is Brad Wagner, and it's located approximately a quarter of a mile northeast of the intersection, 257th Street and 475th Avenue. Scott? Yes, I'm Scott Anderson, Planning Director, and I will be presenting the request that um, the petitioner, uh, Brad Wagner, has made to amend the, uh, the Cedar Ridge plan development. You may recall that approximately four years ago, um, in 2016, the County Commission approved the Cedar Ridge plan development. And just to give you a recap of that plan development, the, the sub-areas, there are three of them. There is a sub-area A, which is the residential component, which allowed for up to 16 residential lots. There was sub-area B, which was the stable area and, and larger pasture area. And that also, let's see, the sub area B also allowed for, there was an existing single family residence that the petitioner, the Wagners lived in, and that also was allowed in that sub area B. And then sub area C allowed for two more additional single family residences, some ag uses and a recreational facility. So, uh, and this all is occurring on 80 acres. So, uh, and you can see in the, uh, uh, the information that was also submitted to you, they have started to develop uh, the sub areas and are constructing homes. The applicant is now requesting the, so the, the amendment that they're proposing is really twofold. The, f the first request is to add six more residential lots and secondly, uh, they are asking to change the regulations to allow um, accessory structures like garages and sheds that could exceed 1,200 square feet, which would bring it into com similar or into the same requirements that the zoning ordinance allows. You may, you may recall that in the past four years, we amended our zoning ordinance. We, everything used to be 1,200 square feet and then that was changed and they want to just be able to go to what is a, currently allowed which would be the 2400 square feet. So I did, um, did a, I conducted a site visit on June 8th and there are a, a six residences that are already constructed and it appears that lots are being prepared for um, other homes to be built on. 
A portion of both Cedar Ridge Place and Pony Meadows Court has been constructed and hard surfaced and the stable is continuing to operate in sub area B. The, that area, the area, the general area is largely the same as when the plan development was approved. It, it's a mix of residential, uh, residential uses and ag uses. You will note on the, you can see from the air photo, air, aerial photography the, on the screen that the area to the north is um, a mobile home park which is purportedly in the process of being redeveloped. Um, as you noted from the last item, that's where her mobile home is at. It is going to be moved out. Um, so the applicant is requesting to amend the uh, the sub area to allow six additional residential lots and that would be uh, in um, let me look here the request is in sub area a to allow six additional lots and then as I indicated uh, to change the, the regulations to allow structures, accessory structures up to 2,400 square feet. Um, staff doesn't have any issues with allowing the, the structures, the larger structures. The residents of the Cedar Ridge plan development should have the same rights to the same size accessory structures as, as other residents in the county. So we are recommending, or staff's recommending approval of that portion of the request. However, in regard to the request for six additional lots, um, I, this applicant has not provided, in my opinion, a compelling reason why, to in, why the density should be increased by uh, approximately 35% or slightly larger than 35%. Uh, and this is a significant increase in the proposed density. The, the number of residences within that development would be similar to the densities of some of our s communities like Rowena or Ellis or Lyons. And so there are, are a considerable number of houses there. Furthermore, the plan development could have initially requested the number, this number of, of dwelling units, and we would have had a full discussion on that request four years ago. And it appears to me that the, ap the applicant is now um, bringing in a request simply to increase the density and enlarge the 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 plan development um, furthermore there as I indicated and I'll show you pictures there are already six lots that have been constructed on with homes on them and I have concerns that uh, those people that uh, bought those house bought those lots and or have already constructed their homes may have done so with the idea that there was going to be a larger open area or more open space and that is now changing with the proposal that is in front of you by the applicant to increase the lots by six lots. So staff is recommending approval of the request to change the wording to allow larger accessory structures. However, uh, we are recommending denial of our staff's recommending denial of the amendment to allow the six additional residential units in sub area A. And I have a couple pictures I can show you. So on the screen right now, you can see the, um, if you, the development is shown in red, and you can see the existing lots. You can see the stable and the homes that have already constructed. You can see the six homes that are already constructed. This shows you the sub areas uh, A, B, and C. Um, a being the residential area, sub area B being the stable area, and then sub area C is the, another ag area basically. Or so the applicant's request is to allow six additional lots along um, Cedar Ridge Place right here. And the applicants live right here and that's one of the houses that was allowed in that sub area. So if, if I go back, uh, I'm, I'm standing basically right here and looking to the north when we look at 
This is the area. So there's an existing shelter belt to the south. This is the existing driveway to the applicant's house, which would be ultimately um, Cedar, uh, the road, uh, which Cedar Ridge Place. Those were the where the lots go. This is looking uh, west down Cedar Ridge Place at the the existing homes that are there. This is the stable. This is on um, Pody Meadow Court, and it's two of the two of the new homes that have already been constructed. And this is another one of the homes that's been constructed. And this just shows you some of the. Um, the horses that were in the larger area, the common area or the ag area. So I think um, this is probably the most relevant map for us to have up to discuss because it shows basically the area where the applicant is proposing the additional, the six additional uh, residential lots to the ability to put those in. So I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have at this time. Any questions for Scott? Madam Chair, this is Jeff. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, well, I have a question, Scott. In our ordinances, do we have any concern about how many houses can be on one road for emergency vehicles? In other words, uh, there's only one way into this development. At some point, do we ask that there be a secondary uh, route into the development? Uh, we do not have that requirement. We do have some requirements on the lengths of cul-de-sacs. However, uh, in the plan as you see it, it's a looped road plan, and so it's not really considered a, a cul-de-sac. You can go all the way around, and uh, you, you come out basically right on um, Cedar, um, Cedar Ridge Point, what's it called? Cedar Ridge Place, sorry. So it's a looped road. Thank you, and uh, do we at some point uh, ask that they hook up to or start their own sanitary sewer district, or do we just allow uh, any number of uh, septic systems to be in, a, in an area? Well, we would allow the septic systems to be installed provided they meet the minimum lot size requirements, which is one acre. All of these lots are one acre. If, if it, we could have required a, uh, a septic, uh, like a sewage lagoon system or a centralized sewer system, that could have been done at the original onset of the plan development. Um, I think it's also within your right if you feel that you want to require it now, you could for all future homes. Um, that's something that you certainly can discuss. Thank you, that's it. Okay. Any other questions for Scott? Okay. Petitioner here, please come forward. State your name and address. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Edwards. I'm, I'm a lawyer in Sioux Falls with Hagen, Wilkin and Archer. And I had been helping with the Wagners with their covenants and things like that. So they helped, they had me come in and try to organize some of their thoughts on this process. Uh, my address is 5700 South Frontier Trail in Sioux Falls, if that's relevant at all. Uh, I'll speak just for about five minutes or so about the Wagners and about the development and how it started. Uh, Scott's already touched on some of the things that I already had in my notes, so hopefully I won't uh, redo what Scott has already um, correctly said about uh, most of this project. Uh, I've known Brad and Laura Wagner for about 25 years now. Uh, I've, I did help them with the covenants. Uh, there is an HOA now uh, on this development that has been uh, doing really well. Uh, Laura Wagner is here tonight. Uh, she's in the horse business. She's been in the horse business for 40 years. She owns the, she and Brad own the stable and the pasture that Scott mentioned. And that stable and pasture uh, does sort of the show horses and the leisure horses and there are some 
retired horses in that uh, stable in the pasture as well. There's no activity like breeding and breaking in young horses and things like that. Uh, the Wagners are very active in the renter community. Uh, some of the folks that we saw earlier on the item before, they knew who they were. Uh, the Wagners go to the Mapleton Township uh, meetings. Uh, they were heading up the Renner Days fundraiser for the fire department and they do other things around with charitable causes and Renner. Uh, they have, what's important too is sort of some bigger picture stuff that um, Scott wouldn't really be privy to, but uh, they have a manager named Katie and her full-time job is the stable in the pasture and she's been doing this for 17 years for the Wagners. And part of the plan of this is that one of those lots uh, in the new area uh, has been decided, well, that's going to be Katie's place. She's getting married here this fall, I believe. And so she and her husband will move from Baltic and they'll take one of those lots. And the plan would be down the road that when Laura eventually decides to retire, then Katie will take over and she'll be living there. Uh, if Katie doesn't take over for whatever reason, uh, they would like to have the owner of the stable at that point in time to have one of these new lots um, to be built out. And so that's another small reason why they wanted to finish out that side of the development. The, the Wagners built uh, their home that Scott pointed out in 2003. Uh, at the time, it was really the only structure in that 80-acre parcel. But to the north, as Scott pointed out, there's over 40 mobile homes. Uh, north of that, there's a Rock Ridge development, and there are over 40 homes there. And so what we're talking about here is 16 current um, houses planned, and then another six. So we're still way below uh, what the neighboring developments are to the north. And this type of community, as you can see from the photos, looks really, really nice. But it's also part of the plan that Renner is the a part of the comprehensive plan and in that corridor that this is where the development would occur. So it really all fits well together. Uh, the Wagners have had no desire to do a 40 house or more development like some of those other ones. This was a plan that was clear from the beginning that it was going to be an equestrian community. It was going to have an HOA and um, they've successfully started this development. Uh, as, as Scott mentioned, there were those three sections. Sub area A are where the residential lots are. Sub area B is the stable and pasture. And then C was all ag, which had and still has uh, uh, horse um, pasture there and uh, other recreational type horse activities. What's interesting about uh, when you talk about traffic and things like that, currently with the horse herd that is uh, pastured there year round, uh, there's a lot of traffic from the horse owners that would come in and out uh, for various reasons to tend to their animal or take them out or to uh, go there and then move the you know, horse to the riding areas. And so if this plan is approved, that pasture area will be reduced by a third. So. There could be some more traffic from residents, of course, but the commercial traffic is going to be decreased because there will be a third less of the horses in that sub area C. The, the, the picture that uh, Scott showed first, I think shows a really interesting characteristic about this development as compared to others. Before the Wagners um, started to build here, bought that property, there's a shelter belt that goes all the way around the three sides around the highway, um, which has close to 4,000 trees. The previous owner uh, made a shelter belt, belt of four to five tree deep of the entire perimeter of that property. And it's a mixture of uh, ponderosa pine and cedar, hence the namesake, and some shade trees too. So when you're talking about Oh, how is the development going to look? It is secluded. Those trees are mature. They've been there for over 20 years, I think. So it's a really neat development. I'm not a house person, but uh, four years ago when I talked with Brad and Laura about this, I just thought it was a very neat development to help them sort of go down this path to get it started. Uh, 
it was always set in stone that that middle area, uh, the houses would be built around it and the middle area would remain a stable and pasture. Uh, Scott and I had a really good conversation last week about this plan and he shared with me his concerns. And he, he mentioned that, well, what if in the future Brad and Laura think, well, the horse business is no longer for us or the future owner doesn't want to run the horse stable and pasture well couldn't somebody come in and just fill that in with homes and it's a fine uh, concern but when you look at that bird's eye view you know clearly this was meant for something other than houses in the middle it was clearly uh, a horse equestrian uh, HOA and the people that bought the homes are relying on that as Scott pointed out that's what they wanted and that's what they got The HOA was started four years ago uh, when this was um, start uh, w when it was approved to begin with, and we platted uh, four lots to begin with and recorded covenants for those four lots. In 2018, uh, there were eight lots platted, and then we recorded eight we recorded covenants for those new eight lots, which are all the same, uh, mine, you know, except maybe a detail or two. And then earlier this year, we did the final four lots and did the covenants for that. So at the present time, we have uh, at least six families plus the Wagners uh, with an operational HOA. Um, one thing I didn't mention uh, meant to earlier is that one of the other lots is, is really earmarked for their son, Philip. He's also active in the um, equestrian type community and he's on the HOA board. So. Uh, some of these lots are already sort of spoken for and we know what's going to be happening. So concerns of uh, who's going to be there or is it really going to maintain the character, that certainly helps there. The Wagners have had no issues or objections or delays in completing the roads that were needed to be done and all of the additional fencing and other controls that were required. And so, uh, so far this has gone off without a hitch. So the proposed amendment, as you could see from the pictures, is when I look at it, it's really to finish that side. You know, it really looks incomplete. There, you know, with the first 16 lots, it doesn't connect the whole perimeter. It really connects only about two-thirds of it or a half of it. So it was not part of the original plan, as Scott uh, pointed out. But when you look at the planning and how it's been going, uh, it, it's a natural direction to go just to finish off that south side and now you've got that perimeter in a more continuity um, you know design the Wagners are comfortable with the time it might take to sell these lots uh, in this economy they've got a few lots for sale now uh, that's not really a concern but they would like to get going on it um, One of the things that Scott mentioned too is uh, on the phone the other day is that in Rapid City when he worked out there, there was, a, there was an equestrian center uh, HOA that was proposed and it, it failed. And so we've discussed that and I think we discussed that four years ago too, which is valid, but we've already been shown uh, that this one is not failing. It's a, it's a really neat development and the folks there are happy. Um, Let's see, I had one more. Well, if I, if I forgot my note, I'll come back to it later, but that's really my, my overall, oh, I know what I was going to say about the loop of the road. I'll let Eric Willardson talk about how that matters because currently it is not a looped road and it would not be a looped road. So with the engineering of having a, a road and a, and a complete track, uh, that helps with some of the concerns you raised about fire and um, school buses and sewer and I'll let Eric visit about that. So with that I'll turn it over to Eric and uh, then we'll have more discussion. Good evening, Eric Willardson, Willardson Lund Engineering. Uh, I'm the original engineer of record for the development uh, with the Wagners. Um, as Dave has pointed out, um, this is kind of a, a completion or a little bit of an extension to kind of complete it. We really didn't know how it was going to turn out to start out with. 
and, and it's really turned out to be uh, pretty successful. Um, from an engineering standpoint, the loop road that this will create makes all the sense in the world. Uh, there are no cul-de-sacs on the end of the roads. They weren't required uh, when we developed it originally. Um, so this certainly makes sense from uh, a school bus standpoint, um, being able to circle around. Uh, there are certainly kids that live out here. Uh, makes sense from an emergency vehicle standpoint. Uh, they don't have to turn around. Um, it also, I, and I have not contacted uh, Minnehaha County Rural Water, but I'm sure they would not object to having a looped water system in here versus two dead end lines. So that makes sense. Uh, from a drainage standpoint, there's really nothing, no, no adverse impacts from drainage from this. It's not in the floodplain. Uh, we're on high ground. Um, I understand Commissioner Barr's uh, questioning uh, sept on-site septic systems, but on-site septic systems are, are maybe a little misinterpreted by a lot of people. Um, don't quote me on this, but I believe there's over 30% of the residential households in this state use an on-site septic system. All farms, all rural residential uh, properties, they are a, a perfectly uh, ecological way to treat uh, waste from a single family residence. So I, I, I don't really understand, from an engineer anyway, I don't understand what the hesitancy is to allow these. Uh, they work. Um, and, and a lot of times they work better than, than uh, central sewers that uh, when rivers flood and they pollute rivers. Um, but anyway, I, I'll get off that soapbox. Um, from an engineering standpoint, to me, this makes all the sense in the world. I'll create the loop. It's essentially five more lots. The sixth one is a, a larger uh, lot, so technically it is six. Finishes off the road, uh, loops the system together, enables the water system to be looped together, doesn't create any adverse drainage issues. Uh, so from uh, an engineering standpoint, it, it, to me, it makes total sense. So with, with that, I, if there's questions, I'd be, be happy to entertain any questions. Yeah, Eric, I got a quick one. You're probably going to laugh at me. But I think completing that loop, it's going to be a, make a great racetrack for some young drivers that will probably be growing up in that area. A racetrack? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you were young once, and I was young. It'd be great to have that oval there. How wonderful. I think the residents along that, those roads might put a stop to that rather quickly if that became yeah, a problem. I could, I could see that, I but it only, takes, it only takes one time that somebody no, could get I understand. into it. I understand. I would think the emergency responders would much rather have a loop to drive around than have to back out mm -hmm. uh, 1,200 feet. So from an emergency responder aspect, they want these loops. Uh, they, want it, they, they don't want to have to back up. Um, and for, for this to turn into a racetrack, I would say that's a, that's a law enforcement problem, not really. A but then <laughs> you have to have law enforcement out there patrolling. But we have loops everywhere. I mean, most subdivisions, even the ones you, you showed earlier tonight, that had a loop all the way around it. I mean, that, that's, I don't, I don't know. Sorry, Doug, I'm, I'm not with you. <laughs> I know, I, I just saw that and it just jumped out. Like, what a great racetrack. Well, it's not quite oval, but I see your point. <laughs> and I am a race fan. Anyone else? Guess not at this time. concerns probably better than anybody here. As Can you please state your name and address, oh, ma'am? Laura Wagner. Um, I live on the property. And they, 
do you, I know you, talk talk. I know you think that it might change the character of the, of the property, but it won't. I promise you that because it's going to stay. But all the views from all these houses stays the same. This is literally our driveway where these lots are, and that's a beautiful view to look at horses also. And right now, nobody really has access to the back subarea C. That's our backyard, basically. And with the road, and these people are, we have the most physical fit neighborhood. They all walk, they're all lovely. Young couples, couple older retired people. But it's gonna allow them access to back there. There's a pond back there that is beautiful. I'm gonna move my miniature horses back there. I've got some goats that are gonna, I'm gonna move back to that area. I mean, the kids love to go see them and they pet them. It's a lovely neighborhood and it's gonna stay rural as long as I'm alive. Um, and it's, it, it's beautiful views from all those spots. It's not gonna change the views to anybody who lives there. There's, and they all, they all know about it. They're all excited about it. They all like it and it will give them more access to the back area, which is really pretty. And I think it'll be a big plus for the neighborhood. And if, if you go out there and look at that road, it's not gonna be a racetrack. <laughs> they never. <laughs> yeah. Well, it won't be because I will be living there and it won't, I will not let them be a racetrack. But it's not. And honestly, I don't think people come up that road except they live there now. And it's, um, there's hills and it's, it's, it's not really. I've a driven road. that. I've driven that. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I got a question for you. Okay. Ma'am, will you please come back? Um, just curiosity about what's the maximum number of horses that you do have there at one time and does that number fluctuate um it fluctuates but pretty much about 40 to 45 and what 45. is uh what is a uh, horse's animal unit what does that count equal to two two what's that okay yeah. an animal unit oh I don't, I don't know there's 30 horses there's 30 stalls in the stable okay and th that's going to stay the same Okay. I'd like to concentrate on making that area pristine. I'd like to reduce some fences. I want to move some of the equipment and just make that area really nice. We we have probably 15 to 20 horses in that pasture area. They live outside all the time. And as we're getting older, every three days having to put round bales out there, we're tired of that, to be honest. Katie runs the stable part really well. And we don't have to store 120 round bales, which would be nicer for the neighborhood. I just think it'll it'll improve the property and my life because <laughs> I won't be out there in a blizzard putting round bales out. So we can take care of the stalled horses. I think it'll be nice. Thank you. Any other questions? Not this time. Okay. Anyone else care to speak to this item? Just to clarify, what Laura was talking about is the, is the acre she's talking about is where those five lots are. It's the pasture is not out in sub area B. The horses are on where those five lots would be. That's I just want to make that clear. Yeah, the pasture horses. Live the pasture there. horses. That's where they're at right now. David, is there anybody on Zoom concerning this item at all? There's no hands raised, but I don't know if you want to call for input, and I can unmute. Is there anyone on Zoom that cares to speak to this item? No one? I don't see any hands raised. Scott, could you come back to the podium? I have a question for you. <coughs> this is a kind of a twofold thing in a way. Yeah. Okay. You you want to, okay. Part of it you're proving and part of it you're denying. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm recommending. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just I, I want to get it straight in my head too. I mean I but I also want to comment that that looped road was in the initial plan. So there was no there's no alteration in their road design than what was originally planned for four years ago. Okay, thank you. 
Anyone else want to comment on this? Sir, come forward and state your name and address. Brad Jurgensen, Gerritsen. Brad Jurgensen, 47705, 255th Street, Gerritsen. I farm right to the east of it. And we just wanted to come down and see what was going on. Because we just heard about it the other day. We just wanted to see what the plan was. And is this zoned residential now? Or where are the eligibility is coming from? I'm just curious. Scott, you better go to the just podium. So that they can hear you. Yeah. Just for everyone's understanding, this it has nothing to do anymore with building eligibilities. Four years ago, it was rezoned to a planned development to allow for a certain number of residences to be constructed. So it has basically a governing document that allows X number of houses to be built there. And what they're asking for is to add six more houses in addition to what was approved four years ago. Does that make sense? Yeah, fair enough. Okay. We're always... It, it's we not own, building eligibility. Yeah, we own property. We're just used to the yeah. so many per section. Yeah. So that was it. And will they sign waivers and that they know they're on, out in the country? We're going to raise up dust. We're going to have cattle out around the fences. We want to get along with the neighbors. We want to get along with everybody, as long as everybody gets along with us. Right to farm. Sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Anyone else care to speak to this item? If not, I'm going to close the floor. Commissioners? Madam Chair, if I may. Is this Mike? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. Um, I guess, you know, some of this is probably just a reiteration, but in my mind, you know, it's got to kind of point out to this, this loop road construction was always on the initial plan. I guess prior to that, you know, I had written down a couple notes that, you know, both the loop road and the loop water service kind of redundancy, the back feed, everything, uh, you know, Eric pointed out is, uh, makes sense from an engineering standpoint. I guess I would concur with that, but I guess when I look at this, Maybe from a different standpoint, I see that maybe this isn't if the root loop road or that the loop water service shouldn't be put in, but matter, maybe more a matter of how do we fund that construction. And by doing these additional lots, we pick up that, or we can cover that cost more easily. But I don't know whether that's maybe a justification for adding these additional eligibilities or lots. So I guess with that said, I would make a motion to follow the recommendation of staff to um, approve the accessory structure size, but deny the additional eligibilities. Do I have a second to that motion? This is Becky Randall and I'll second that motion. Thank you, any further discussion? Roll call vote. Jeff Barth. Aye. Adam Morhauser. Aye. Doug Odie. As much as I was opposed to this four years ago, I will vote aye. Mike Ralston. Aye. Becky Randall. Aye. Ryan Betterflit. Aye. Bonnie Duffy. Aye. Major amendment has been approved. Duffy. Yes. I just wanted to clarify we had the two separate issues on the on the agenda. One was, as you mentioned, was the making the accessory structures larger, which we did not oppose. I did not talk about that. That seems to be one issue. Um, when Mr. Odie made his comment that he was not in favor of it four years ago, it seemed to me like Maybe we have a confusion on the vote. Um, I just wanted to ask if there could be a separate vote for each portion of the proposed amendments, just so we are clear. Donna Kelly, is that her? Um, I'm gonna bring her in here. Did you hear that, Donna? I did, and I would concur with what the counselor is stating because I think it's confusing as to the second part of, of Commissioner Ralston's motion. Was it a motion 
to approve the Cedar Ridge plan development to allow six additional single family residences or was he making a motion to deny it uh, in accord with what staff's recommendation was. So I was unclear on it. Again, I'm sitting out in the hallway uh, because of the room constraints in here, but I agree with petitioner's counsel's uh, request for clarification of the record as to what was the second part of your vote. It was clear to me as to the first portion of the vote, but I'm not clear from Commissioner Walston as to the second part of the vote, as to his motion. So Madam Chairman, maybe we need two motions. One motion for the request for the 1,200, larger than 1,200 foot accessory structures, and then another motion on adding six lots. Is that, can we do it as two it separate motions? Yeah. So why don't we do it that way? Okay, commissioners, let's start from scratch here. <laughs> One section at a time. All right, yes, so I can start off. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the accessory building, uh, re new revised restrictions. Becky Randall, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? So we're going to do one portion at a time. Jeff Barth? Aye. Adam Marhauser? Aye. Doug Odie? Aye. Mike Ralston? Aye. Becky Randall? Aye. Ryan, Ryan Bandifoot? Aye. And Bonnie Duffy? Aye. Okay, now we have the second part of this. Uh, the staff recommends denial on the um, six additional family residences. Do I have a motion on that? I'll make a motion to deny the additional six eligibilities. Doug Odie will second. second. Okay, we have we have a motion second. Is there any further discussion? Roll call vote again. Jeff Barth. Aye. Adam Marhauser. Nay. Doug Odie? Aye. Mike Ralston? Aye. Thank you, Randall? Aye. Ryan Bandifoot? Nay. Bonnie Duffy, aye. That motion passes. That's a denial. Thank you. Move on to item number five. Conditional use permit 20-18 to expand the Class A Daria CAFO to 12,000 animal units on the property legally described as Lot 1, Moody County Dairy, um, Dairy Subdivision, Government Lots 1 and 2, Southeast Quarter, Section 10, Township 104 North, Range 47 West. Uh, this is Moody County Dairy, um, Lynn Bodwine. He's also the owner, located approximately four, four miles north of Sherman. Kevin? Uh, County Planning Department, Kevin Huckman. Uh, as you stated, this is a conditional use permit number 2018 to expand an existing Class A dairy CAFO uh, from to 12,000 animal units uh, on this property. Um, I guess uh, we haven't received uh, any concern about the the uh, petition yet, and I guess is there anybody here that has any questions or concerns to go through the staff report? I guess can you just blow up the picture a little bit? The map you gave us was just hard to see, I guess, in our packet here. Um, yeah, sure, that's a little better. Th the map is a little difficult because it was scanned from a large document to a very small picture. Um, I can go over this. All the, the new barns will be going on the north side of the property over here. There will be a new lagoon also in the northeast. And then there will be uh, manure holding tanks uh, on the southwest of the property. 
and the tanks are for uh, methane digestion. Okay. When he was here last year, was, was there was a stream or something, I think that was in question for that one lagoon, right? Yeah. And we're all good now with that? So, so yes, and the, n the new plans are gonna be set, say, set back from that stream. The stream would be right through here. So yes. Okay. Any questions for Kevin concerning this? Guess not. Is the petitioner here? Will you please come forward? State your name and address. Lynn Bodewine, 46945, 251st Street, Baltic, South Dakota. Any questions for the petitioner? Yeah, Lynn, this digester, will that require additional water usage than what we No. Um, so just a, just a very brief, you know, some of the, you know, I saw the, the drawing of the tanks. You can't see them very well. Um, you know, just a very quick description of methane digester. The project is, is there's a separate company coming in and we're going to put our manure stream through the digestion portion and they're uh, slated for this is three uh, concrete tanks uh, partially in the ground partially above and they have a, a cover over them oxygen so everything gets heated and the methane gas is created and then it'll go into a natural gas pipeline um, so there's no additional water usage with them actually there's a little decrease when you go through the microbial process, there's a little decrease in the waste generation. And so I was just here last year in 2019, and that was prior to me knowing anything about the digester project. Um, and last year was so wet, you know, we were really slow on the construction and the expansion. So we've done some of the boxes that are on there are done, but we never really, um, you know, made it you know, never completed that expansion last year. And I've always kind of had a commitment to the county is, you know, from my own personal viewpoint, you know, I like to come in here. I, I know it's, you see me too often, but it, I like to come in when I am going to expand something, you know, gives public opportunity for comments, whatever. So when this digester project came about, what we want to do is pull forward because um, the more more manure going through it, the better. So we've got heifers um, in some other farmed out locations and we thought it was a perfect time because most of the additional animal units because you know are all young stock um, and, and some cows. There's some more cows onto that. So um, I don't know if that explained, but you know for us, it makes sense to now to get as much manure and housing and get it through the digestion system so okay with the number of animals that you're going to increase by when this digester system is totally up and running will it be at 100 percent capacity or what kind of capacity it, are we going to talk at right now when it's up and running it, it will be for those three tanks it will be at 100% capacity. What they, on that, on that drawing, there's three big tanks and there's a circle. Those aren't all tanks. That's just a circle um, around in a field of a biogas flare. It's a perimeter drawing. Um, so if there's anything, um, let's say that the natural gas pipeline or something you know, they gotta let gas off the tank and so they'll have a intermittent flare that would come on. So that's what a couple of circles. But yeah, this thing, the, the three tanks are really, they want it sized 
they want it sized. You know, the the company Brightmark that we're working with, they don't they want it sized to the animals that we're going to put through it, um, and that's what some of the it, it, it pushed me to think what do I need to pull forward? I mean, my wish list for the next five years all of a sudden needed to come forward, and that's why I'm moving more heifers back in the farm and, you know, some of the calf rearing. So that, that's really what happened between 2019 and 2020, my request. Any further questions about the petitioner? Madam Chair, this is Jeff. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, Lynn, how are the roads uh, treating you, and what direction do you generally send the milk from this facility? Does it go east, or does it go north, and then and then or west? It, I'm only asking because the yeah. roads are not that great up there. It, they're not. Um, you know, it goes west and then uh, usually heads east, I think, or, or north to Highway 11. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, last year was a, you know, terrible year for getting stuff out. So, and, and the, you know, the gravel road, we pretty much maintained the gravel road leaving the dairy, and we worked on that. And, and there was some discussion with the county about taking out that small highway um, that moves between Sherman and Highway 11, which, you know, I just hated. I, I don't know where they've landed on that project, but I just hated to see that leave because it's pretty tough to take a highway that you built something like this by and turn it into a gravel road. So, but I, I don't know where that's at. But, you know, we're, you know, we're getting by, you know, pretty good right now. And if I might, uh, how quickly will you get up to that new, uh, if we permit this, how quickly will you get up to the higher limit of animal so, units? So on the, on the cow portion, I wrote in there two things. You know, I usually divide it to, I have a certain project in mind. Um, what I'm slating for right now is to add the number of cows. Um, because we're flipping what was a heifer barn, um, you know, that's kind of hooked onto the milking parlors. It was originally slated for heifers, and so we're converting it from heifers to lactating cows, and so that fits with the with the parlor system. And then we're going to build a barn, uh, the barn that is, uh, you know, just beneath like the manure storage is there that will be a replacement heifer barn put in that location. Um, so that replacement heifer barn would be for 800 breeding heifers, and that would get built uh, this year. And then there's another barn on the lower portion of that that's beneath, you know, that would be on the lower, and it's to the west. And that's a future, I mean, our herd has... Um, our mature herd has all these small little crossbred beef, beef calves, and that uh, would be kind of my barn that I would like to build that would bring those calves from three months to six months of age when we'd sell them. So pretty, you know, a lot of the animal units are pretty small animals. And I don't think we were adding another waste storage, but that is some of that. It's in and around. Um, you know, I don't. I always want lots of room because of years like last year, um, and we don't like spreading manure or pumping manure in the spring. And we could use the dirt, you know, some of the earth for this project. So. Any further questions? Thank you. 
Anyone else in the room here care to speak to this item? David, is there anyone on Zoom that you're aware of? No hands. Okay. No Thank hands. You. Okay, commissioners. Madam Chair, this is Jeff. Uh, so is there no one there in opposition at this point? Not that I can see. Nobody's come forward to speak. I'd make a motion to approve. I'll second that. I'd make a motion to approve the project as proposed. Did you second that? Yeah. I second it. Okay, any further discussion? Motion is made and approved to uh, approve conditional use permit. Conditional use permit 20-18. Uh, roll call vote. Jeff Barth. Jeff Barth. <laughs> Pardon me? He's frozen. So he looks frozen on there. Oh, he's frozen. Yeah. Okay, I'll move down. Adam Morehauser? Aye. Doug Odie? Aye. Mike Ralston? Aye. Becky Randall? Aye. Ryan Benefit? Aye. Bonnie Duffy, aye. Jeff Barth, are you there? Um, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can now. Do you approve this? I vote yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's been approved. Thank you. Okay. Old business? Our new business, Scott? Uh, one item of new business. Um, typically, in, in the past, we've always had like a summer get together. Uh, last year, we had it at uh, the Safari Bar in Renner. And so I am wondering if you want to proceed on with having another um, recognition dinner or if you'd rather just skip it given the fact that we are practicing social distancing and um, and the current situation. So uh, what is the, the thought of the Planning Commission? As much as I enjoyed it last year, I'd say skip it this year. I'm indifferent. It doesn't matter. I guess no I, matter can, I, me I can, we can skip it a year. Okay. It, it, because I just, if we want to proceed ahead, I would look for a location and if you want to skip it, then that saves us all work. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Nope, that's all. Okay. We have a motion to adjourn. He makes a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. Okay. Roll call vote. Jeff Barth. <laughs> Adam Morehouser. Hi. Doug Odie. Hi. Mike Ralston. Hi. Becky Randall. Hi. Ryan Benefit. Aye. Bonnie Duffy? Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>